in our last few classes we have learned the concept of algorithm and flowchart to solve a few problems slowly we have moved to the programming part where we have seen the mostly used library functions and corresponding header files in today's class we will see the basic structure of c program means how a c program looks like and in the next class we will learn key features of c programming as we know that c is a programming language and like other programming languages c is also used to solve problems that we cannot solve manually or efficiently so like other programming languages c can also be used to solve a simple problem like addition of two numbers or printing something and it can also solve a complex problem which we cannot even think of or which is beyond our knowledge and every programming language has its own structure has its own features or syntax that we need to follow when we are solving a problem through that programming language so in today's class we will learn the basic structure of c programming in the next class we will learn more about the key features of this language and in our future classes we will learn every other aspect of this programming language in detail so let's get started so first we will see the basic structure and c programming or a program which is written in c language that has several sections it's not mandatory that uh, in a single program we will have all the sections together but there is a section or most important section which is called main section or that has the main function that is the only mandatory section that we must have in every c program that we write the first section that we talk about in our c programs is documentation section then followed by link section we will learn about this sections little later in bit detail then link section is followed by definition section then after that we mention global declaration section then we have the main function section that i have just talked about it has two parts declaration part and execution part then the section which is written for user defined functions or sub programs and it may have several user defined functions but in a program we should have only one main function now documentation section is that section where we actually describe all the possible details of that program now when we are writing a program definitely it has some functionality it has some purpose so clearly if we mention that purpose the name of the program also the uh, other details like who has written that program when it was first written then how many times it was modified then which version we are referring currently those details we may include in documentation section so here we have a sample c program as we can see in the first three lines we have written about the name of the program and also the author the date written and all these lines that we have written as description of the program those lines are basically have been commented out and as you can see they are represented in lights and color and not only in the beginning of the program we describe or we give the all possible details of the program but also it is a standard practice for any programming language that if we can leave a small description or explanation of every possible part or every possible logic of the program that way what will happen is when someone else will read or go through our program he or she clearly will understand the purpose of that program and in practice it will not be a pro small program like 50 lines or 100 lines it could be a program of thousands of lines so it will be at that time it will be very helpful if every possible part every possible logic is described clearly and not even we'll be thinking of someone else even when we will be looking at our own program our own code after a long period then we may not understand our own logic quickly if it is not explained or described properly right from the beginning you make this as a standard practice that you clearly and concisely describe every possible part of your program after documentation section we have link section now what link section does is in our c programming we use many functions now what is a function function is you can say in simple words that it is a sim uh, lines of codes and it does some 
specific task or it has some specific functionality and there are two types of functions some functions who are already defined their task their functionalities are constant they never change and they are inbuilt and they come with the compiler and their definitions are mentioned in some libraries or in c that we refer as header files so at the beginning of the program after documentation section we mention all those header files where the functions or inbuilt functions or library functions that we will be using in our program their definitions are already written so that when we will be compiling that program so during compilation those header files are linked and the inbuilt functions that we have used in our program the definitions of those functions can be fetched from those header files so that our program easily understands that all those inbuilt functions that we have used in our program how they will work or what they want to do in this program we have mentioned only one header file which is stdio stands for standard input output so in within this header file we have many library functions and in our program we have used some of them and this syntax is fixed and all the header files that we use or mention they are preceded by this directive which is called pre-processing directive hash include then after link section we have definition section where we mention all the symbolic constants now in our future classes we will learn that all the data that we will be handling with definitely a program which does some specific task and when it is solving a particular problem definitely that problem will have some input data and based on those input data and the logic that we are using in our program it will produce some output so basically it will handle some data input data and output data and all those data will be handled in our program by variables and apart from those variables in the calculation or the problem that we are solving there we may need some values which remain constant throughout the program and maybe that we use several times in our program and those types of constant values we may define in our program before beginning of the program as symbolic constants so here as we can see we have used one symbolic constant and every symbolic constant will be preceded by this directive hash define and then the name of that constant that we will be using instead of value you will be using that name and uh, in our program in future if if the requirement comes like we need to change the value of that symbolic constant we will be changing only here and that will be reflected in every part of the program wherever it has been used so here the n is that symbolic constant and the value of that constant has been assigned as 10 so wherever this capital n will be used in the program the value 10 will be assigned everywhere and in our program we may use multiple symbolic constants so every symbolic constant will be defined or declared before the main function then after definition section we have global declaration section as i said to handle input and output data we need to use some variables in our program now there could be two types of variables one is called local variable and the other one is called global variable we will be learning in detail about those variables their types when we use those variables before using we need to declare those variables so if we are if we are declaring some variables within a specific function then the scope of those variables will be within that function only means we can use those variables they will be alive and active within that function only but in our program apart from this main function we may have other several functions which are defined by us it may happen that there could be some values that we want to use throughout our program so for those values the variables that we will be using they should be declared as global variable so from the from the names itself you can understand the difference between local and global local means the scope is limited and global means its scope is huge if a value we want to access that value by every function in that program then that value should be stored in such a variable so that is declared as global variable and all these global variables should be declared outside of all the functions that we have in our program 
the general practice is we declare all the global variables before our main function starts now in this program as you can see this is our main function and within that main function we have some variables like count sum average number and these are their data types that we will be learning later but suppose if instead of using or instead of declaring within main function if we have declared before the main function then this the same variable we could have used as global variable and all other rules of declaration they are same only there is a parameter called storage class that we will be learning later so instead of declaring here within a function if suppose the same variable if we had declared here then this would have been treated as a global variable and then after the declaration part or global declaration part we use our main part of our c program which is the main function and main function as i said it has only every program has only one main function using more than one main function is illegal in a c program and this section main function section has two parts declaration part and execution part so execution part is that part where actually we give the instructions or where we write all the instructions or statements that we want to process as main part of the logic but before execution part as i said in execution part we will be dealing with data input data and output data so for them we will be using some variables and those variables should be declared before we use then that thing is done in the declaration part so in this program as you can see we have these four variables that we have used in the main execution part and here in this is the declaration part where we have declared those variables along with their data types then we have initialized and that depends on our requirement this is not any mandatory part and this is the main logic or this is you can say the execution part where we are writing the the instructions we are giving instructions to the compiler now here we have used this as you can say scanf then this printf all these scanf printf are inbuilt functions or library functions and their definitions are included in this stdio or standard input output header file here in this program we have used the concept of looping that we will be learning later since we are solving a problem definitely there will be at least one statement or one instruction now there is a rule that this every function is followed by opening parenthesis and closing parenthesis and when we are starting our main logic or the main function then that should be enclosed by opening brace and this closing brace and every logic every instruction that we want to follow or that we want to write for that the variables that we will be using and for them the declaration part though they should be confined within this opening brace and closing brace only and all the statements in declaration part and execution part they should be terminated means every statement should end with a semicolon so as we can see here this is declaration part it is ended by a semicolon everywhere and then here within this looping concept also the statements that we have written there also every statement is terminated or ended with a semicolon and if we forget to mention this semicolon then it will show us syntax error during compilation after main function section as i said there will be sub program section where we define our own functions user defined functions they are called and we may have several user defined functions but it is not mandatory that they have to be defined after the main function no they can be defined before the main function also so their order is not mandatory now in this program as we can see we have these header files here we don't have any symbolic constant or global variables declaration this is our main part or main function and this is confined within this opening and closing brace and this is our main logic and for that the variables that we have used we have declared here itself we along with their data types printf scanf all these are inbuilt or library functions but apart from these library functions as you can see here we have used a function that is defined by us that is defined by user 
so when we are using which is already not defined in the header files then we need to declare we need to define it means we have to mention that what this function will do in our program so that definition part may be after the main function ends or that we may include before the main function starts so all the rules of defining or declaring a user defined function we will be learning in future classes but you just have a feel that how a user defined function looks like so within this again opening and closing brace this is the formula that we have written here and this is actually the main purpose of this function and now whenever we will be calling this is the name of the function so whenever we will be calling this function by its name it actually fetch the logic that was declared within or as part of that function and that will be embedded in the main part wherever it is used so this is about user defined function or sub program and this is all about the main sections that we have in c program in our next class we will be learning the key features of every c program so see you in the next class till then stay tuned thank you